That's right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, in, in case any of you who don't know me, I'm Steve Modulesky. Everybody knows me as Moz, and so please feel free to refer to me that way. Even my mother at the end called me Moz when it was ambiguous in our family. Um, and I am the board chair of the nonprofit Court Sports for Life. That's the entity that, that now uh, manages the center and has been raising the funds to do the construction that we're seeing out there. So I want to thank all of you for coming out on, again, another beautiful day. Um, welcome, and I'm excited. We're finally getting shovels in the ground. Woohoo! <laughs> my wife, Debbie, prepared my cheat sheet. The only thing I did to it was print some of the things in large type so that I can actually read it. Um, one thing, you know, since I'm in the sun and you're in the shade, I'm going to be brief here. <laughs> So I will get it moving here. Um, I'm going to go through just a little bit of the history of how we got here very briefly. As you know, the impetus for the project that we're doing here has been the pickleball community. has been looking for facilities to play pickleball in the winter without taking some of the tennis courts away from the tennis community that we have here. And so I want to definitely start with a shout out to that whole community, the Steamboat Springs Pickleball Association. Um, their first president was Bob Dousman. Is Bob He's here? here? Oh, yeah. Hey, Bob, sorry. Good to see you here again. Thank you so much. Um, and, and current president is, is Jeff, how do you pronounce it, Laksag? Laksag, okay. Um, and we have some of the. We also have some of the board members from SSPA here. I think we have, we've got Randy Wirt, I know is here. Yep. We've got uh, Christy, I've seen. Christy Reagan is here. Um, is Peter Pollan made it? Not yet. Not yet, okay. Uh, Margie Huron is not here. Um, Blair Picard. Blair? Oh, there we go, Blair. <laughs> <laughs> not on the board, but a past president of it. So I wanna thank all of them, which started out as a tiny dream of a little extra bubble at the end it's been turning into a wonderful project that that we hope will lead to a wonderful building over at that corner of the building so thank you to all of them and their support and impetus for this about 12 14 years ago um, I was staying up at the base area at the mountain um, during for a ski vacation and on a day I didn't want to go skiing I took <laughs> step back I, I took the little took the little uh, mini gondola, the wild horse gondola down to come to this and, and just took a tour and says, wow, this is a wonderful tennis facility. And, and I've been a player of tennis for more decades than I care to count. Um, I said, I gotta spend some more time here. And sure enough, I have. And so tennis is still very near and dear to my heart. And I wanna give the second shout out to the Steamboat Springs Tennis Association whose mission is to develop the sport in the youth and underserved of our community to keep repopulating those who will then come and enjoy this facility. So I want to thank all of them. Um, I don't think Bo hasn't arrived yet. But there's lots of board members. But we do yeah, have a lot of board members yeah. here. Um, Jan oh. Theodore is here. We've got, um, is Ann Kuhn here? No. Yeah. Okay, Kathy Fader. Um, yeah. Bert Halberstadt, yep, Debbie Lundeen, no. John Paulus, yep. <laughs> Emily Rogers, is she no. out here? She's around, okay. Um, and, and, and Wade, why is he here? No. No. Warren. And Warren, Warren Luce, the, the yep. executive director. Yep. Um, Yay. I want to thank them in particular. I mean, obviously, this has been an area of, you know, we've had to make some compromises because we only have so much land and we're trying to fit a lot of facilities in. And I want to thank the Steamboat Springs Tennis Association for many suggestions that they've had, some of which we've used, some of which we didn't use, but all of them were in the interest of improving this community. And, and I appreciate that and I thank them for that. Next, I want to shout out to the people that helped run this facility. Um, who are facing a very challenging summer here, but with optimism for the future. Obviously, our executive director and director of operations, Loretta and Bill Conway. <laughs> and our pickleball gurus, Sean and Marcy. 
thank you all. And, and I know we've put a lot on your shoulders for this summer. <laughs> it's going to be a challenge, but we know you'll rise to it. And we thank you so much for it. All right, now I want to move towards our organization, Court Sports for Life. And one of the first groups that I want to particularly thank is the building committee. They have been working behind the scenes, and now finally, in, in, in the front here, we're seeing the results of their efforts. Um, our, our building committee has been chaired by Jeff Temple. Woohoo, Woo Jeff! And other members of the team, we have Chandler Diamond from Vertical Arts, Ricky Jenkins, Sean Pummel, Loretta, Travis Holmquist from HLCC Construction, um, and our owner's rep, Barry Sherman couldn't be here today, but I, I just want to thank them. It's a volunteer, mostly volunteer group, um, and, and been putting in many hours, working through many possible designs, working through city permitting and everything like that, and the results of all that effort spanning practically two years now, I think, we're finally seeing it, we're finally breaking ground, so I want to thank them in particular. The next group is about to kick into higher gear, and that is our finance committee, <laughs> headed by our treasurer, Randy Wirt. Um, we've got members uh, Blair Picard, Steve Weiss, Loretta Conway, um, and, and I want to thank all of them because they're going to be ones looking to make sure that we have enough money for all this and that we don't run out of money at any time, <laughs> etc. So thank you to all of them. The next group I'm going to thank, um, and I'm sure that just about everybody here has had some interaction with them, um, and maybe you're not quite as thankful as I am because of that interaction. That's our capital campaign committee, the people that have been raising the money for all of this. And that committee is chaired by Becky Lamb. Thank you, Becky. With members Loretta Conway, my lovely wife Debbie, Carol Breslaw and Meg Tully. Yay. Now, I know that some of you may be sporting some arm injuries from having gotten your arms <laughs> twisted by them, <laughs> but the good news is one of our corporate sponsors is the Steamboat Orthopedic and Spinal Institute, so they can take care of you. Because one thing I've heard is those arm twisting injuries, they have a tendency to reoccur. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so watch out for that. <laughs> as, as you know, this is phase one. <laughs> that has implications. Finally, they're not here right now because, unfortunately, we scheduled this meeting before we knew that, that city council and staff, this is their weekly meeting. Um, but we do want to thank them. They've been, been helpful in the process. Indeed, the idea for setting up a nonprofit to raise funds for this philanthropically um, and to manage the facility, it originated with them. Now, maybe it was because they didn't have the money in the budget to, to finance this, but nevertheless, credit where credit is due, and they've been very helpful along the way. Um, and I want to give particular shout outs to Gary Suter, the, the city manager, the city assistant city manager, Tom Leeson, the city attorney, Dan Foote, Parks and Rec's director, Angela Cosby, um, and the city council, when it was chaired, we, we originally got our agreement done, it was with Jason Lacey as chair, um, and, and now Robin Crossan. And, and I guess Heather and, and, and Michael are not going to be here until later, too, because they're, they're at the meeting. Finally, and most importantly, most importantly, significantly importantly, if not most importantly, all of the donors for the project here. Thank you so much. <laughs> And as Debbie emphasizes here alphabetically, we've had the Daniels Fund, Bob and Claudia Dousman, Wynn and Elaine Dermody in honor of David Berelsheimer, Kurt and Sue Jaggers, Malcolm and Marcy McCormick, Sherry and Shelby Reed, Steamboat Orthopedic, and of course, our wonderful anonymous donor who in addition to being very generous, I think you have to admit, is probably more photogenic than some of us. <laughs> he will be appearing in some of the photos. All right, we're here to mark a groundbreaking, and it's a time of, of it will be stress for the staff, et cetera, but it, it's a culmination of a lot of effort, 
and I want to thank, ev again, everyone here for all of that effort in whichever part it was, from financial to our capital campaign committee that basically their budget, I would call it they, their budget is a shoestring budget, except that really is insulting to shoestrings. They've done an amazing job. We've raised over $4 million here. We need to raise almost the same amount, a little bit less, to get to phase two. And I just, again, want to thank everyone. I'm so excited that we're finally getting it done. Okay, I'm going to turn the mic over to our building committee chair, um, Jeff, just to give you a, a quick update on what you're seeing out here and what you will see at the end of this phase one. <laughs> thank you, Bob. Uh, obviously, what we have behind us here, it's a really big job. And I'm really excited that we have Travis Holmquist at HLCC to head it up. They've done great projects in Steamboat for years now. And he's on every single weekly meeting that we have. We do a Zoom call every Tuesday morning. Uh, we also have what I call the horsepower in town. We've got native excavating. You can see them behind us. And they, they can move a lot of dirt quickly and they do great quality work. I've been fortunate enough to work with them uh, three or four times in the last 20 years and they've done fantastic uh, with, with fantastic results and then we have altitude out of Denver for, to do our court work and if you they do quality court work all across uh, the American West and I think they're gonna do a fantastic job for us we'll have a challenge at the end of our project at the end of the summer because a lot of the court work is um, weather dependent, temperature dependent, and so the more we can get done earlier, the better. And I was trying really, really hard to get ground broken in April. We obviously didn't quite get it, but we're, we're doing pretty good. We're cranking in June. In our first phase, there's gonna be a lot of site utilities uh, and st storm sewer and storm work that'll go in that really was it wasn't here before and we're that's required because of the the new permit and the new work that we're doing and that'll include some pretty good sized detention basins when we're done we'll have concrete slabs for 20 pickle pickleball courts and six tennis courts but most importantly as we do the work for the for the 12 indoor pickleball courts on this end of the site uh, the foundation work is going to be done at the same time so we won't have to come back in and tear things up to put that foundation in for the building we know that building's coming um, also there'll be 28 new parking spaces which, uh, sometimes 24 sometimes 26 and then Ma's very adeptly moved it to 28 and uh, that's a big deal and uh, you can imagine how hard it was to what I call spud those parking spaces in on this tight space. Uh, but it was done and really hats off to Chandler who was here who had to do that, that planning. So it's a super exciting day for me and, and for our committee and I think for everybody here it's a wonderful feeling to see it actually get going. So thank you very much. And I'll hand it over to Loretta. Thank you, Jeff. Jeff is part of this dream team, and boy, do we have a dream team. I remember when I had lunch with Moz when we were forming Court Sports for Life, and when he said he would be the chair of the board, I almost fainted. Uh, as we gathered our board members, yeah, Rick Garth <laughs> and Becky Lamb and Randy Salke, I mean, this dream team started forming, and then this very small <laughs> fundraising committee our other nonprofits, STA and SSPA, and then our staff, Marcy and Sean leading the pickleball and all the staff members. We're one of the few people in town that haven't had to struggle for staff. We're full and we've even got a few people waiting to work here. So that makes me so proud and so happy. And everything that we're doing here is pointing that we are going in the right direction because we've almost doubled our revenue in a few short years. And not only is pickleball exploding, tennis took a huge growth in the last two years and we think it's because of COVID. Everybody got so tired of being at home and these are two sports where you don't have to be too close to anyone 
to have fun and socialize and be healthy. So everything we're doing and everybody here is a part of something very special and we're now going to start taking some photos and uh, celebrate what we've started and we're going to be finishing it soon. Please help us get to the last part. We need three and a half more million at least to get phase two done. Prices, you know, keep going up. It's crazy, but we haven't stopped for a second. Becky Lamb, you are just amazing. She came to us, you know, she was working on Old Town Hot Springs and they took a break from fundraising and we scooped her up and she has not stopped for one second. So thank you everyone for everything you've done. Our big corporate sponsor, SOCI, we hope they're going to stay with us for many years and grow with us. We know we need them because we're always so active. Everybody's getting injuries and pains and aches all the time. So we've got one right here, a new knee. <laughs> all right, so Debbie, you're going to help wrangle the different groups. We're going to put a hard hat on you, give you a shovel, and take some photos right over here.